Hi everyone, Jamie Finn here from On The Ball Team Building. Um, this is the start of our live series with some of the top athletes around the country. Um, just having a little chat, genuine chat, and to see what it's like, uh, like for them in their in their playing world and how are they getting by at the moment uh, through this current lockdown. First up tonight, we have Jamie McGrath of um. That he previously have done Dundalk, uh, won two league medals with Dundalk in eighteen and nineteen, and he has recently joined. Um, he's recently joined Saint Mirren, so instead of leaving him waiting there, I'm actually going to bring him on, and we can we can start this chat. Technical difficulties. Hello, Jamie. How things? Jesus, I, I, I was like, what, what's after going on? <laughs> I know. I think my internet went just as I went to join. So good yeah, start. Is it, is it that bad over on me? Uh Having a slow day today, so well, hopefully, it, hopefully it's all right now. So, yeah, I was wondering. I thought it was the Wi-Fi down here in Kerry. It's it's uh it can, can be very hit, hit and miss. All right. Yeah. How's things with yourself? Good, good, good. How are you? How are you surviving the lockdown? Yeah, going all right now. It's I don't know what it is. It feels like week a hundred now, but I think it's what well, week eight is it? So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've been home now eight weeks now, so it's it's going all right. Jesus, and how how you find the the training? Are you are you training from home or, or what's the what's the story around that? Yeah, we've been sent uh, programs from uh, Saint Mary's. So um, yeah, it's like I said. I think today we got another program for week eight. So uh, it just shows you how long we've been in lockdown now. So, but uh, yeah, taking along. Um, there's a pitch about hundred or hundred feet from the house. So uh, it's, it's happy days. You can just go down there and do what needs to be done. So. That's good. That's good. That's good. And how are you finding training on your own, or or is that a is that a challenge for you, especially coming from um, a GA stronghold up around there? <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh, it's obviously it's different than training and with, uh, with with all your mates and training with a bunch of lads that you you do every day and you go in every morning into a dressing room environment and it's obviously different now going up to a pitch where there's no one around or that, but. Um yeah, it's so far so good. Like it's a good opportunity to work on work on yourself and work on what needs to be worked on. So it's not often you get these uh get these chances. Yeah, exactly. That's good, that's good, that's good. I suppose uh, you have a lot of uh a lot of time out, a lot of time to think to yourself as well. Um I suppose look, uh you you only joined uh St. Mary and there in, in January. Um so how has the transition been and um, I know, I suppose for a 23 year old to go over, you know, to to move away, it can be a bit daunting. But at least, I suppose you're a bit that that bit older than you know how other people will go at at the age other people will go away. Um, how are you finding that at the moment? Yeah, that's the thing. Um, you see a lot of lads going when they're what 15 or 16, and I kind of had the chance to do that myself. But um, looking back, I think my parents were wise enough to. Make, like they've kind of made a decision for me like it's you're too young to go or whatever so um yeah I think I'm obviously more mature now to to go over there and I'm a man now so it's different than going over as a teenager or that but um yeah it obviously is different it's the first time living away from home and uh with that comes a lot of added responsibilities like washing and cooking and stuff like that so um, I'm glad to be home now with the with the mammy's dinner. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. And uh, it's um, you know, when you you went over at the start, was it a was it a big change, a big shock to the system? I suppose. Was first of all, was 
a big step up the fact that it's probably would it be more is it more there's more commitment involved and it's more full on would it be I wouldn't say because Dundalk is obviously the top uh, club in the country and um, it's like anywhere I've been or anywhere I've seen so far so but um, yeah it was it was a bit of a step up now training and stuff um, but I came in from an off season so um, all the boys were midway through their season, so um, oh, it did take uh, took about a, a few weeks to catch up to their level, and I picked up a, a knock or two here or there, but um, thankfully now I'm injury free and I uh, I got the grips of it fairly quick. Good, good, good. And uh, I suppose your your first game was Rangers, was it? And you you missed that the first league game. Yeah, that was the first league game. Uh, like I said, I picked up a little quad strain just actually the week of it, so. Um, the family came over to watch it, so I was going to be up in the stands, but uh, it was a good introduction to Scottish football. Yeah, and I'd, I'd say I, I believe that um, you were you were eager to get on the pitch because uh, Stevie Gerrard was one of your yeah. idols growing up. I think you can see even Liverpool clock up in the corner there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this this house has been uh, Liverpool mad, so um, obviously I grew up watching Stevie G. So um, yeah, it was it was a uh, nice to see him in the flesh. Class, class. Look, hopefully you'll, you'll get a chance to to uh, butt heads with with his team at some stage in the next in the next That's future. Good, yeah. Um, and I suppose the your uh, the photo on your Instagram uh, of you outpacing uh, Scott Brown. Uh, what uh, well, how was it to play against Celtic in in Celtic Park? I say it must have been unbelievable. Every Irish boy boy dream to to play in that atmosphere. Yeah, it was. It was it was a special day. So it was. Um... Friends and family came over again, and uh, yeah, the whole day was brilliant. Obviously, the result wasn't where you wanted it to go, um, but yeah, it was a special day, and uh, makes all the sacrifices worth it. So. Class, class. And uh, how did you did, how did you find it playing against against Celtic? Was it uh, was it something similar to other League of Ireland teams, or would it have been something like the we say the Europa League standard? I suppose it is a big a big step up. Yeah, it was, it was, it was obviously a step up. Um, Celtic and Rangers are ahead of, in the league for a reason. So they have yeah. a, they have quality players and their budget as well makes them allow them to do that. So um, yeah, they had quality players right throughout the team and um, very experienced players at international level as well. So um, it, was, it was it was like a European game. It was a it was a step up now, but it was a, it was good good cool. to be part of. Cool, class, class. And um, what's the the current situation with the the um, Scottish League over there? Is it pending, or are you, or is it finished for the year? Or yeah, it's kind of still up in the air. It's like nearly every league. Um, we're kind of getting day by day updates, but until UEFA kind of make a final decision, we don't really know what the crack is yet. So um, yeah, so there's talk about finishing the way it's fi- finishing the way it is, or because. It's, Personally, I can't see it really going ahead in the foreseeable future. So, yeah, with all um, with all the restrictions and and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just have to try keep fit, and you never know when you'll have to be called. So, yeah, exactly. And how how are you finding that? We say training every day on your own, and you know, I suppose like with every athlete at the moment, there's no in goal there. You know, you don't know are you going to be back playing on the pitch yet. Even with club players around the country, how how are you adapting to that aspect of things? Yeah, it's like I said. I think it's um, a good opportunity that you, n- you don't really get. Um, we should be in season at the minute, so it's it's not like you should be taking a holiday. It's not like your body needs a rest. Um, so I'm viewing it as an opportunity to get quicker and fitter, and uh, maybe not stronger because there's no gyms open. But um, <laughs> but but yeah, I'm using that as an opportunity just to improve. So improve yourself. Good, good, yeah. good. And um I suppose look to, to, to bring to bring it all the way back to the to the early days. Um look you're still only twenty three, you're still young, <laughs> you know. But yeah, uh, I'm not, I'm getting on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, not, but I suppose look just just bring it back to I suppose when you when you started playing soccer or, or football as you call it in your own meet. Um how do you find that play, you know, playing that with you know most of your mates would be playing G A at the time or did you play a bit of G G A too or or what was the yeah, obviously in school you're you're playing everything. So you're playing hurling, you're playing football, you're playing soccer. So um, I actually did play Gaelic football for 
I think it was one summer in between the soccer season just as a, a way to keep fit but I really enjoyed it now uh, playing with all your mates like you said and it was actually a very enjoyable game to play I, was, I think I was playing full forward so I was just oh, them in. So, <laughs> the manager used to give, me, give out to me because they'd be turning up with the ball on the floor and he was saying pick it up pick it up but, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah it was, it was enjoyable alright that's good, that's good. And did you, was that when you were, say, under, under, when you were 13, 14, or, or was it, it was obviously before, we say, you started playing proper uh, and professionally? Like? I think it was under 12s or something, so I just moved up to Cherry Orchard at that stage. So. Oh, the, the golden years. Yeah, the golden years. Yeah, and we, we say you went from um, uh, your home club, to Cherry Orchard and then you went from Cherry Orchard to UCD um, you, were you at UCD for long or, or what was the was say the time frame between those moves yeah I was at Cherry Orchard I think from when I was about 12 till about what, 16, 17 and then League of Ireland under 19 kicks in then if you're lucky enough to get, get a club so um, yeah I was fortunate enough to have a few offers and I decided to pick the UCD because I originally planned to go to college there but um didn't work out that way due, due to whatever reasons. But um Fair enough. uh yeah, I spent a year at UCD and it was a great year under nineteens. I think I made one first team appearance as well. So um yeah, obviously then six year I decided that I wanted to go to Manute and uh, at the time Manute had a great uh, scholarship with Pat's so um oh. it kinda of worked hand in hand and Manute was near to my house and stuff, so um it worked out perfectly so it did. And then you, I, I believe you had, um, there was some, a coach with UCD was a, a big influence at, at with you at the, at that time. He, well, yeah, was, uh, Mar- Martin Russell was there. Um, he was first team manager and yeah, he kind of sold, sold uh, himself to me when I was about to sign. So, um, yeah, he's just really good brain about him. And he had UCD in the first or in the Premier Division at the time and they were playing very good football with a bunch of college students. So, um, he was he's was, he was a very good manager. So was... Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, you went from you went from UCD then to Pats, and that's where I say I suppose as you probably would say yourself the the ball started rolling, and you know things kind of started to become more clear. Um, uh, tell us about that exactly. Yeah, so first year of college, um, I started playing with St. Pats. Um, Yes, had what well, two years at 19s there, and um, Pats were challenging for the leagues. They were in Europe, they were flying, so there were some unbelievable players there at the time. And uh, Liam Buckley was obviously a, a great man manager there, so he won leagues and cups there. So um, he kept a keen eye in the 19s, and he brought a few of us up to the first team eventually. And um, it was great training day in day out, first taste of professional football, and I was training with some brilliant players that have won leagues and. Uh, very decorated players so um, it was a winning dressing room so um, I'd be grateful for Liam for giving me my chance to see in football and, uh, I think I kind of started breaking through when I was 18, 19 uh, a few boys got injuries so um, fair play to Liam he gave me my chance he wasn't afraid to trust his young lads so that's good and you, 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 like you took the opportunity when you know you were given it and that's probably the most important thing yeah that's um, the thing you have to be lucky like yeah, and I suppose like like back to back to everything, you have to be prepared for for those opportunities. And would I be right in saying that uh, your first game, you was that the goal you you scored, and um, you scored the win the winning goal, and a guy ran out of the cubicle. Was that <laughs> one of your first games? <laughs> yeah, no, I think that was the first uh, cup final I played in. Um, it was actually down in Limerick, and uh, I, was, <laughs> I was only watching the game last week. It was on TV and. Um, I seen someone put the video up, and I actually never spotted it originally, but um, <laughs> yeah, it was a good video. <laughs> yeah, it's, at least you brought you brought joy to a lot of people around, around there at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on from there, then I you 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 won the league with with Pats, and did you move to Dundalk then, or, or was there what was the story there? Um, so after what was it, two or three years at, at Pat's, um, I was actually in my final year of college, and it was just before my January exams that the window was open, and um, Stephen Kenny rang my agent, and uh, I couldn't believe that you'd like to sign me, whatever. So Savage. when I yeah when I heard that, I was I was mad to get the deal done, and lucky enough I went through, and yeah, I spent 
three unbelievable years at Dundalk and three of my best years in football so far. So. And le- leading on to that, it's a good way to le- lead into it. Um, with, with Stephen Kinney, of course, do- current Irish uh, Republic of Ireland manager, um, what was he like to, to train under um, and as an influence to have such an influence over the group? Um, obviously, he did with you know what he achieved with Dundalk was remarkable. Like, but we say on, on your career or you know your progress as a young player coming into the group, um, what how how beneficial and how influence uh, were you by him? I'm rambling on there, no, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, he was massive. Um, from the first day I signed, he was he was um, arm around my shoulder and what he's seen for me, he gave me the number 10 shirt straight away and I was only what, 21, so yeah, he had a lot of faith in me, so yeah, he made me feel like I was the best player in the league and I was only a young fella, so he he, uh, he gives, he loves to give his team um, all the confidence in the world and he believes in every one of his players, so um, I believe he'll do really well with the senior team and um, I remember he just he's on my case, always get better, always stay out and always just keep improving yourself. I remember when I first came in I was not really used to going to the gym or doing gym work like that. So every uh, every day he'd be like, Did you get your gym work done or did you get your gym work done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, he was he was uh, he just wants the best out of all his players and he wants each player to reach their potential. So um, Brilliant. yeah, even if you're not in the team he tells you why and tells you what you have to do and he keeps players happy that aren't in the team which is a big aspect of that's very so. important yeah it's very very important so yeah it's it was two brilliant years under him and then obviously at Vinnie Perk last season his first year of management and he, he did a remarkable job as well being his first year in management he's won the league so um yeah I was lucky to work with some really good managers and you're, you're quite unlucky in the the final the lost in penalties wasn't it against Shamrock Rovers yeah like in penalties it could go any way really do you know? Yeah, that's the thing. It's a lottery, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we say with um back to back to sorry for going back again, but back to Stephen Kinney. Um, you know, obviously, you know, with, with Ireland, um, you hope I suppose you you know from your experience and from your dealings with him, would you hope that? And can you see him doing well with the the Irish national team? Yeah, I've no doubt he'll 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 do very well. Um. First of all, I think he'll get how we how we play. I think he'll change that. I think he'll encourage us to get on the ball a bit more and he'll on the ball. Our <laughs> 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 Sorry yeah, for dropping um, you. <laughs> <laughs> he'll definitely encourage uh, our playmakers to get on the ball more and try and use them as a focal point in our play. So, um, yeah, I think he'll give uh, give the lads great courage as well to play and play out from the back and. No matter who you play against, not to be afraid and just just play the way you normally play. So. Very good, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We're we're definitely looking forward to see um what he'll bring to the table, but definitely what he's done with with Dundalk. It you know all, all the signs are are good. Um, yeah. And I, I believe ho- well hopefully he will he will bring some of the League of Ireland players um to the senior setup as well. Um, definitely. I, yeah. I hopefully he will hopefully he will um. So what's leading on from that? I suppose um. How do you find it coming into Dundalk, you know, as a young player and I suppose on the back of winning the league with, with Pats? Um, you know, you, you came in then with, with the Dundalk and you, you won back to back league titles. Um, how, how is that? I suppose, look, you, you've, you've won a huge amount yourself as, you know, with players uh, in a group dynamic, but you've also won the 2018, you know, um, the Irish Young Player of the Year. Um, so, I suppose things have been going up and up for you, and you, you know it's been going in the right direction. Um, hopefully, the same can can happen over and with Saint Mary. Now, um, uh, I know you're, you're in a relegation battle are you at the moment. Or what's the what's the current situation? Yeah, it's a very tight league um, at the minute. Um, there's I don't know three or four points between bottom and up to about seventh, I'd say. So um, it's a very very tight league, and I think that's a bit of a difference than. Uh, playing back home, you're used to winning nearly the majority of your matches, or your favourites win the majority of your matches. So, um, yeah, going over there is obviously a different dynamic. Um, you're playing at the near the bottom of the table, so every point is a crucial one. So, um, sure, yeah. but yeah, so we went on a, a decent run um, when I first went over. So, um, which pushed us up. I think we're in ninth now. So, 
Um, we did spend a, a week or two at the, the at the at the bottom of the league, which is which is a bit unusual. But um, no, we've uh, we've a lot of quality in the team, and I don't think um, that will phase us. Good, good, good. And um, what's what's it like? I wasn't too sure until 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 um, I was speaking <clears> to you before that like Saint Marin is actually in Glasgow, isn't it? So there's, yeah, there's actually three teams. Paisley, yeah. It's just outside uh, Glasgow. Just outside, is it? Yeah. So, what's the? What have you been going into Glasgow regularly? Like, or or is it? Is it that far away? Um, I live kind of in the mid mid midway between both. Um, I'm about ten minutes from the training ground and about fifteen minutes into the city centre. So, um, but I actually haven't got my car sorted yet over there. So, um, I think. It was the Wednesday before the lockdown was announced that my car had actually got over there. My dad drove it over on the ferry, so, oh, <laughs> so Jesus. I actually I actually never got to use it. So, um, but uh, Connor McCarthy, a fella from Cork, um, he signed along with me from uh, Cork City. So, um, the two of us kind of live uh, beside each other, and we, we'd be quite close. So, um, he got his car sorted before me. So we try and go out exploring as much as we could, but um, we were kind of playing three matches a week so Jesus uh, yeah so you, you can't really take your uh, eyes off the ball no no no, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I suppose on to Conor, Conor, uh, Conor McCarthy uh, did that make the tra- transition a bit easier um, having someone from Ireland as well over there um, I know look, all beat you're still going through a transition but you know the initial few weeks over there was it easier to have someone from Ireland with you, I know you probably wouldn't really have known him, but look, you're you're from the same country, so that kind of attracts you, you know, naturally. Yeah, obviously you share stuff in common from playing in the league of Ireland, and we've played against each other um, a few times, so um, we kind of we were familiar with each other. So um, when we first moved over, we were staying in the same hotel, so we kind of got to know each other very quickly. So, uh, so uh, yeah, it was. It did make things easier. Um, going into training, you kind of have a familiar face uh, before you meet all the lads. But once you get to meet all the lads, then it's it's uh, after a day or two, you just become one of the lads. So it's it's a great dressing room. So it's that's good. That's good. That's good. And we say the way you're, you you know you you were saying there about the you could be playing two or three games a week. Do you find that a big we say strain or big? I wouldn't say strain. A big shock to the body. You know, coming from we say the league world and over. Um, not really because the way they work the league they kind of they love to back backdate a lot of the fixtures so um, from about July backwards you ha- you're you playing maybe three nights a week so it's it's kind of the same over there okay. um, we were unfortunate enough because we had a few games called off with the with the Glasgow weather up there so um, yeah that obviously postponed a few games and Made a bit of a backlog, but it's not nothing that you're unused to. You're used to playing every three days, so it's you have to be ready for it. And is there, I would say, when those games are going, you know, are coming on, are taking place? Um, is there much, is there much time to to train in between? I suppose they kind of come hot and hot and heavy, really. Um, yeah, we if we're playing Saturday, Wednesday, for instance, we'd be in Sunday for recovery. Well, we'd be off Sunday for recovery. Sorry. And in Monday recovery, train Tuesday, game Wednesday. Um, if you have any niggles again, physio Thursday, uh, back in Friday, game again Saturday. So it's kind of not really many days off, but you need them days in to recover right, and so you're not stiff for that going into the next game or picking up unnecessary injuries or that. So true, true, true. And um, I suppose like we we touched on at the start as well. Uh, what has been the biggest shock? I say, you know, moving over. I, I I believe it's your first time as well, like living away from home. You know, so yeah. I suppose washing, you know, making dinners and all that. They, they all add to the to the day. Like, how, how <laughs> do you know? How how do you find how do you find that now? Are you well settled in, or is that routine completely gone now because you're, you're back <laughs> home? <laughs> yeah, it's nearly completely gone now. But um, no, nah, it, it did take a, a few uh, weeks to adjust. Um, just learning how to use the washing machine or not. But uh, <laughs> once you get the hang of it, it's, it's easy enough. But uh, yeah, I actually don't mind cooking now. It's it's, uh, it's actually quite enjoyable. You have a lot of spare time on your hands as well, so it's it's uh, something to do. And 
Um, I only live like about five minutes away from the shopping centre or whatever. So it's everything's on your doorstep and there's an Aldi right beside the house. So it's uh, oh, happy days. handy enough. Uh, happy fact. days. And yeah. is, uh, what, what would be your favourite dish now to, to cook up? Uh, probably a bit of sweet potato and I don't know, a bit of steak or something. The steak, yeah, I can't feel it. Like, are going oh, to M&S yeah. for uh, some ready to ready meal. For ready ready <laughs> meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all right now. I'm sadly a good fair few of them now, but uh, yeah, they're actually handy enough now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, that the, I suppose, look, again, I, to, back to the point we touched on earlier on, that, you know, you, you went over, you know, you made that big jump um, at the age of, of 23. Was, you know, when you look at other players, you know, going over now, younger, and look, I've known a few players that have went over and they've they've come home. What advice, you know, I suppose you, you made, probably looking back now, you're happy that you made that decision. You didn't go over and, mm-hmm. and you know, you waited till you're 23. And with Brexit, I believe that restrictions, you know, it could happen that, you know, Irish mm-hmm. players won't be able to go away until they're 18. But look, we just don't know now at the moment. But if that was the case, would you be in favour of it? Or, or yeah, how do you I think, feel about that? I think it's uh, nearly a blessing in disguise. Um, obviously, if you have your Man United there, Liverpool's or Chelsea's coming in for you, it's, it's hard to say no, but you see a lot of young players leaving for League One or League Two teams and they're they're coming home by the time they're 18 and yeah. if they don't, they've missed their leaving cert, they've missed their education and it's too late to, it's not too late to go back, but it's hard then to come back and go into college or, or that, so I think if players leave it till they go to 18, they're more mature, they have probably the leaving cert under their belt hopefully and they're yeah. kind of free to free to give football a chance because at, at the in a blink it could be all over. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's important. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Because like 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 back to what you were saying there. Like I've you know you you see a lot of players coming home and you know in their mind they think it's probably too late then when they're eighteen or nineteen to go back to school or college. But look, it's not. You know when you're twenty three now and 24, 25, you know you're you're still young, but. You know, I suppose when, when they're in that mindset, they're demotivated. You know, after coming home, they feel they've they've left their family down. But you know, what advice would you give to those players? I know, look, you haven't been in that situation, thankfully. But to young players who have went over, hasn't haven't succeeded. You know, over there, but have come back. And look, a lot of Irish players have done that, and you know, they're playing with, with their country now. Um, what what would you what advice would you give to, to sorry for putting you on the spot now but what advice would you know. give to, to to players like that that have come home and they're obviously demotivated and, and upset and feel like they've let their family down? Ah, uh, it's not letting their family down at all. It's it's just football. Like it's yeah. the toss of a coin. Like if you're kept or if you're let go. So I wouldn't look at it like that. I just look at it as unlucky or you picked up an injury and at the wrong time or just managers sometimes just don't like it and. That's That's another side, you, yeah. you could be the best player in the pitch and you're the last manager and the next one comes in and doesn't fancy you. So. Um, yeah, for lads coming back, I'd just say to stick at it. Um, get a league of club if you can. If not, I've known players that come, came back, even Richie Tell, he came back and he's gone on to play for Ireland and he never got a league of Ireland club when he came back. He went and played Lancer Senior League with Bluebell and kept his, yeah, he kept his head down and eventually got a league of Ireland club and you see the majority of players at the international level have actually played in the league so um it's a great it's a great platform to bounce back if if you can and I've known a lot of players that have done that and that have previously not failed in England but previously come home from England and ripped up in the league and now they're playing over in England and in the, in the international side so um yeah I wouldn't look at it as a failure at all so it's part of football Exactly, exactly, exactly. I know it's it's it's. I suppose like it. You know, when you're that young, you it can affect you a bit more. But obviously, there's much more to life than than football. Definitely. But uh, definitely, yeah. It's um. I suppose quick fire one or two questions. Um. What uh, what would be your favorite meal? Would it be steak or would it be or would it be chicken and pasta? I like a kebab now. Would you? Kebab, <laughs> <laughs> Skip, I'm just getting one of them off you saw next time. <laughs> um, yeah, um, probably healthy food would probably be, like I said, probably steak and sweet potato and a bit of veg or something like that. But uh, pizza or kebab are bad either. No, no, no. What's, what's, your, what's your favorite music? 
I know. I, I, I never told you about uh, these, no, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, probably Post Malone would be my my uh, my favorite at the minute. But uh, like that, I I'd listen to anything. So, um, wow. so yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And I suppose, look, what if what advice would you ha- give to any young young players starting out or they're at the stage now? You know, they they might be getting maybe recognition at a county level or you know with Ireland or they might be you know some scouts over in uh, over in England might be onto them or, or the UK. What advice would you would you give them or their, even their parents? I just not get caught up in scouts coming to watch you or trying to make the international side or trying to make county sides. If it happens, it happens, but all you can do is try to focus on yourself. And um, One person's opinion might be different to another, so I wouldn't let anything like that get you. Um, I've been told no from loads of international managers growing up, and eventually I got my chance at 19s and 21s. So um, if it doesn't happen this time, if you work hard enough, hopefully it'll come around the next time. So. Um, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. keep at it. Yeah, for a young player, just say like, keep uh, keep working. Like if training's over, make sure you stay out and do an extra five ten minutes. Um, because it doesn't happen by luck that you become good. It's uh, down to doing extras, and that'll make you the difference between other players. So. Perfect. But yeah, I've I've I uh, listened to one of your interviews there. You did uh, a while back, and you were saying you used to spend a lot of time um, after training in in UCD just practicing with the with the coach at the time or the manager yeah um probably the parents weren't too happy with that because they were waiting in the car to drive me home but uh, no it has to be done and like i said stephen kenny kind of put that into me again and lean buckley when i went down to senior football like i'd be a young player in it with all the with all the experienced pros and i'd kind of be afraid to join in what they're doing but um they'd force into doing it and um, whether it be shooting sessions after training or free kick practice or that, um, yeah. When I went to Dundalk, I think every day, nearly every Monday and Tuesday, spend an extra twenty twenty five minutes out with the strikers or whipping in crosses or just just different things to, that you don't normally do, and they all they all add up in in the end, and um, you have to keep working, and that's that's the way to get better. So perfect, perfect, perfect. Um. I suppose yeah, that's uh, that's it. No, I suppose I was just trying to trying to think of any more questions. To um, don't think I do. No, have you? Uh, so you're you're enjoying the 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 isolation at the moment, are you? Um, the quarantine. Um, and is is there any like like I was saying earlier on? Is there any clarity around um when you will be back? There's not. No, is there? No, we've we've uh, we're constantly updated in the group chats or that, but um. Yeah, there's still no clarity really when we'd be definitely back or, or that. So, um, yeah, like I said, I don't know how the league's going to play out. So I don't know if we're going to have to finish it. So I don't know if it's going to end and we start a new season. So, um, so yeah, it's just going to have to be ready for when it comes around. So, yeah. Um, and how, you have to how, enjoy, you have to enjoy how, this time at home as well. So Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, get, yeah, get used to cooking a, a, lot, a lot of meals. I'll be rusty when I go back for sure. <laughs> um, just I suppose, look in an ideal world, would, do you think the the league will be back soon? Or I know there's a lot of factors yeah. to to play, you know, to to take into consideration. Yeah, there's a lot of things to weigh up because I don't know if you can bring back a group of lads and they're all tackling each other and yeah. even shaking hands and stuff like that. So. Um, I don't know. Maybe until a vaccination is is brought out, but hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully it's back June or July yeah. or that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird one because I don't think the world has ever seen things like this before. So no, um, it's it's like a movie, isn't it? It's like a Netflix it is, documentary. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it's uh, how how do you feel if if hypothetically that it did um you know if you are going to play behind closed doors. I suppose it's, it really depends how you look at it, like, isn't it? Yeah, obviously you'd, you'd want to get back playing as soon as possible, and you miss the the buzz round matches, but the buzz might not be there now when you're playing in front of yeah. seven thousand seats or whatever. But um, obviously football might have to change for a brief period, and you're just gonna have to adapt to that. But um, 
yeah, it obviously will be different without the fans there, and you get that extra bit of adrenaline going and the warm up and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, it's probably it probably will be something that we're gonna have to adapt to for a while. Yeah, look, it's, uh, definitely big changes around uh, around the corner. Um, hopefully we get some clarity on that sooner yeah. rather than later. Even in, in the GA, you know, like it's. It's you know I suppose from the outside looking in it's it's kind of unfair on on athletes having no you know clear indication you know whether it's going to go ahead or or anything like that um but look it's it's it depends on the, the powers that be you know it's, there's a lot of stuff to take into consideration and hopefully something you know something clear will will come to play sooner rather than later. Yeah, definitely. I think the world is going mad without sport as well. Um, yeah, it is. Jeez, people are obviously as a up. player. You, obviously, as a player, you mess up. But even my dad watching Super Sun there, that like everybody, I think, is cracking up missing the, the boys are very <laughs> matches. So. And, uh, oh, did you? Did you like that's the? Did you get a the haircut or how we, how we used to wave uh, with that? The mother trip, trimmed around the edges of it there uh, last week. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna be uh, a while before I think uh, we'll be back. Yeah, to, uh, it's got, it's to the hairdressers. What about yeah. yourself? Is that why you wearing the hat? Is it? Yeah, it's why wearing the hat. Yeah, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's all over. The, it's all over the shop. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, we'll have to do something about it. I don't know. You have to 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 cut it all off there now and then, like so. But yeah, um, shave the head. Shave the head. Yeah, <laughs> could be done. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, Jamie. Um, I suppose I'll end it there. I think we've we've covered a huge amount. Um, thanks very much for taking our time, taking the time out and coming on, being the first person on and uh, having having the face to 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 come on and uh, have a chat. <laughs> um, before I go, I uh, I I heard you you played with a very good Kerry player with with Sam Pat, didn't you back in the day? Uh, uh, players. Yeah, brother, yeah. Billy and Darren, yeah. Billy and Darren back back in the day. Um two two very nice nice lads that very down to in fairness. Um yeah, yeah, just very very few lads from here actually end up, you know, say making it at a high level, especially coming from such a, a you know, GA strongholds. Yeah. Um so it's look it's it's obviously great when, when players play play at a high level like that. Or even if it's in look across the pond for a while or it's in Ireland so look that's the that's the story said to me rambling on for another way <laughs> throwing awkward questions at you um, all the time in the world eh? <laughs> uh, look Jamie thanks very much for coming on and look I hope you, you enjoyed it um, and hey, Jay, thanks for having me on no bother thanks a million and look stay, stay, uh, stay safe and I'm looking forward to taste your uh, new recipes whenever I see you again Oh, Jay's. I'm going to hold <laughs> you to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jay, and Jay, for having me on. Perfect, Jamie.